Hope you're enjoying the rainy weather out there. So I made this Ferris sweep a while ago, totally thanks to the channel Ben Valak. It's a pretty like far extreme, one of those little minimal keyboards that you see those weird programmer guys use. Because it's only got 34 keys, and if you do the math, like 26 of those go to the alphabet, and then you've got just a few left for, I have like the thumb keys for modifiers. How do I, mirror stuff is really confusing me. Uh, but yeah, and then you've only got like three per other one of your little finger things. And then you can see it's got two microcontrollers. I remember I built this for probably about 80 bucks in total. Also, one thing the astute, the really nerdy of you will notice is this is actually a special chopped off version of the Ferris Sweep. I went and I edited the uh, the files in KiCad and then custom printed them. And I still have a couple extra actually plates that I could mail to some lucky person if I ever do a giveaway or anything like that if you want to remake this keyboard. And then all you need other than that is this connector cable. It's like a TTRS or something and then little jacks for that. And then these are Elite C microcontrollers. You get them for about $20 each. At least that's what they used to go for. And I find these pretty good. Some people prefer, I think there's a newer one called maybe Nice Nano that is like uh, Bluetooth enabled and you use ZMK instead of QMK to configure it. I personally didn't do that just because, I don't know, I didn't want to deal with like a whole battery thing and charging and it's like, if you had a desk, right, why would you need a wireless thing unless you're super into a clean minimal setup? Just, just plug in the wire, it's not that bad. Um, and then yeah, another thing is that I haven't seen a lot of other people do, which I think is a really nice addition. You can get these little um, like magnetic caps that come with like a USB-C cable, so these just snap on. That way I can quickly plug and unplug this keyboard. I don't want it to be like, it has a little blue light. You can see if I plug it in actually. I haven't used this keyboard in a while, so my muscle memory is going to be pretty bad. It's got this little blue uh, LED. And that's kind of annoying at night. I don't want to be seeing that. And some people said, you just take tweezers and rip it out. That seems like a little bit risky to me. I'm not all that good at electronics. And also, why not just like plug it and plug it? I don't know, it's, it's not that big of a hassle. Uh, and yeah, and I soldered all of this myself. I got a soldering kit for about 20 bucks. Haven't used it for anything else since, but it was pretty easy and fun, honestly. Like it, it maybe took a few hours to fully get this working. Like the, the pins didn't fully connect up first time but yeah I, I got it working after that. Uh, let me actually show some like what this what typing on this looks like so I've been using my laptop keyboard for a hot minute oh also great life hack is take two uh, mouse pads and use that as a uh, padding for this some people like to tent and all of that but I never got into that that extreme side of the hobby thankfully um, yeah, so I've been just typing on my laptop keyboard for a long time because I've been traveling and it's inconvenient to bring this thing around and bust it out. I used to like take a hat, like a wool hat, and put it over my laptop and then put it on top of that for kind of muffling, but yeah, so I guess, sorry, there's a big police chase going on again. I guess uh, it would be good to see what keyboard layers I have because it's been a while. And I think in my config, I actually have, like, uh, somewhere in Tmux, I have, like, a shortcut. Yeah, so I can open up my QMK firmware with uh, Tmux leader. It's not leader, it's prefix. Okay, and that looks like it didn't actually work. It created a new session in Sessionizer, but it didn't take me there, and that's probably because this is a newer computer and I don't actually have the files physically. So if I go to my GitHub, actually let me turn on key casting too, so anyone who's curious can see. Um, yeah, GitHub, and then let's probably sweep, yep. And this is all kind of overkill, like navigating around with full keyboard. I'm starting to realize more and more it's just like a waste of time. Okay, so let's grab that. Oops, I accidentally closed my terminal emulator, that's annoying. Okay. Fucking Mac OS, I gotta get off this shit. All right, so let's uh, get clone that sweep. And then let's see, what, what am I working with in terms of key map? Oh wow, this, this formatting is not gonna look good. So, okay, hopefully that's like visible in the video. I guess I can zoom in or out. Um, but basically, first layer is Colmac DH. So this is all like just the, the normal typing stuff. Why am I using Colmac? Um, 
I don't know, just because I feel like if you're gonna go into this, this sort of keyboard journey and you're gonna create a keyboard that looks like this or anything remotely like it. I don't I don't care if it's a Moonlander or a Corn or any of that stuff. It's like, why are you still on QWERTY? You know, you're optimizing everything and then you're like, no, I can't, I can't do it. I'm, I'm, no, what if I need to switch to another another keyboard? Let's be honest, you're not doing that at this point. It's it's already over for you. So just go all the way, optimize it all the way. Don't None of this half optimizing. So anyway, yeah, you can see, this is super zoomed out, but I've got home row mods for alt and left GUI, and then right GUI for alt on the other side. And I put them there, probably should have put them up because it's kind of annoying with certain delays sometimes, but it works fine. And then right here I have control escape tap mod, um, which people have told me to do in the past on a video, but I, I've done, and I don't like it on the laptop keyboard because it's just like, I don't wanna feel that delay. This it's kind of fine because you're already, you're, you're committing to it, but that uh, waiting for the release to hit escape is just annoying. Then I have space over here, and then the final key is up a layer. And then this next layer looks like it's my punctuation layer. So it basically has all the symbols and stuff. I can go in here and type whatever. And I don't have to switch, like I don't have to reach super far for anything. It's got the minus, the colon, uh, the pipe, and yeah, all of the all the good stuff right there. And then this key all the way on the far side is uh, back to layer zero. And then this one is up a layer, actually up two layers. And then I keep the space there because it's nice to be able to type space without going over layers. Uh, and then let's see, up another layer. You can kind of pause and look at this more closely if you want to. I didn't follow any tutorial. I just kind of changed things until it felt nice. But let's see, this is the arrow key layer. Uh, yeah, so that's... How do I even get into it? So it's like up one layer. My muscle memory is so bad for this now. Up and then like that. No. Uh, okay, it's the far to one and then to, so it's this twice, okay. And then what are the layers actually? Are they just like, okay, yeah, they're, they're just like Vim keys. All right, so I basically never used that because at a certain point I just, I avoid like the plague any non vim text field and it's not like there are things like sketchy vim you know and there's a kind of vim there's so many others now I used to think like that sounds awesome it, I try to get that working my problem is though it's not vim it's like not the same thing like it feels almost as good but then there's inevitably some advanced vim feature that I want to use or I want to like traverse a jump list or tag stack or something and it's like just not there and I just don't want to force a non text field into being vim like the other text fields that aren't Vim that I'm interacting with, right, are like a search bar in my browser. It doesn't really matter. I can just use like Alt Delete to delete by word instead of Control W. A little annoying, but it's fine. And like other than that, I'm never typing in Google Docs. I'm never filling out anything that isn't just Vim. If I do have to do that, say it's like a web survey or whatever, first of all, I probably won't fill that out on principle. And if I absolutely have to, I'll just use Vim and then copy and paste it in. So I think that's just like the, don't go overboard with all those Vim text field stuff. I mean, you can, it's just like, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's that worth it to me. And this looks like not that well thought out. I mean, I have tab, I guess I have a couple of other things going on here, but it mostly looks like this is just for the arrow keys. And then the number layout, I did a weird thing. You can see like across here, I have all the numbers like just on the home row basically. And then going down to the key below my index finger, which is the most ergonomic, I have five. And then same thing over here with zero. And then I just keep some punctuation because usually you want to combine numbers of punctuation. Then I have like the, the upper number things up here like hashtag and all of that. And then command modified arrow keys. So that was back when I was still trying to force myself to use like Vim style motions in text fields. Now I just fully embrace Vim. Um, let's see, and then Alt modified. Okay, that's that's kind of ridiculous at overkill. That was probably newbie QMK configuration. I don't even honestly know if that's Flash to this current layout, but I haven't in a while. Oh, and then mouse keys, so you can move your mouse at the keyboard. That's kind of a cool gimmick for, um, I don't know, non-programmers, when they see that, it's like, wow, mouse on a keyboard. Sometimes useful, but honestly, like, oh, and I have a QWERTY layout, too. I guess that's, I was maybe trying that out for, like, playing Hypixel Bed Wars or something on this. Terrible idea, because you're constantly, like, accidentally layer triggering. 
And uh, I mean, maybe it could work. Maybe you could have a dedicated gaming keyboard, but I would, I would honestly buy another microcontroller flash that if you wanted that like a cool kind of half thing. But yeah, I, I don't know about that one. So yeah, the, the whole kind of point of this video, right, is I've, I've stopped using this keyboard pretty much. And the reason is for the first couple of, I don't know, I used it for maybe a year and a half and it feels really good. It feels really nice to not reach for things and like not be kind of scrambling around for some random grave or tilde or I don't know, whatever other symbol, maybe it's grave, I don't know, whatever. The thing is, I don't want to be reaching for these keys. I just want them guaranteed under my fingers. The only problem with this is like the amount of layer switching you have to do to achieve that is grotesque. Even if it's like slightly, it, it, it's like perfectly optimized and it's all minimized and you practice a lot. I got it down to very good, right? Where it would be super comfortable and I could basically in stride just enter things. It's just so much layer switching that when I switched to my laptop keyboard and did that for about a year and went back, I just could not like, I just noticed it too much. Like all the little delays and all the layer switching and stuff is like, I just want a dedicated number key now. I'm not saying this is a total waste of time. It's just like the ergonomic benefits are not as crazy as it seems like they would be. Like it feels kind of nice, yeah, but it's like, it doesn't really hurt me to type on a laptop keyboard. If it, if it does hurt you to type on a keyboard like that, I would consider something like slightly up. This is a 34%. I would consider like a Moonlander or Kinesis, or maybe build your own version of those. So you're not paying the proprietary fees, but something like with dedicated numbers, you know, or just, just a little more. Cause the layers, I think they're a little overrated to be honest. I think like the physical keys are good. And yeah, you don't want to go too far into optimizing this stuff. Like it's just better to get work done on things that other people will see, other normies will see. It's like a fun little hobby and it's definitely like better than doing certain other things. I mean, I'd rather be doing this than watching some sitcom TV show or whatever. Like at least I have a kind of unique piece of my personality and it, it does help a little bit with ergonomics, but I wouldn't stress this side of programming ergonomics too much. Like when you first start out, it's really fun to explore and yeah, but I think you, you can just be faster using a normal keyboard and a different keyboard layout is a big win for sure. Now to give an actual programming demonstration, I guess, let's, uh, I guess I'll go into my zoom in first. Oh, I don't know if I can zoom in on this keyboard. I can only yeah, zero it out for some reason that the command and plus keys have always been on different layers, never bothered to fix it. Uh, pretty annoying, but Okay, let's quit that with a bang. And then I guess I'll go into love, and then let's see what we've got. Fork.lua. Do I have the love plugin? No, I don't. I have to reconfigure that after I uh, redid my configuration. But you can see like I can move around with all the control stuff. I can type pretty well. Self dot this, that. Okay, I can type kind of well. Uh, and it's nice to have like control built in there and I can move everything around. I don't know, it's not that crazy. Let's see if my snippets carry over. No, they did not. I, I really have to work on my configuration for actual work. It's been just like for the purposes of videos. So vip, center, gv, right. Yeah, I don't know, I can move around fairly quickly still with this or like vap, m plus 10 move that down, actually up 10 lines. I don't even know what that did. Okay, and the formatter's still working. That's some random thing. I, I really have to add this library to path. Diagnostic hover is still working. Uh, yeah, everything is, is pretty much what it is. Here's a cool little command for you. Let's say we want to delete everything that isn't a dot .lua. Let's do v to select all negatives, and then lua, oh, slash lua, and then slash d, and then underscore so we don't clobber our registers. That's the void register. Hit enter. Okay, that actually deleted everything that wasn't lua. I wanted to delete everything that was. I guess it would be, I guess it would just be g. So like, duh, let's replace that with a g, rg, dd, and then enter. Oh, I accidentally entered the, the blank line, Q colon. 
See, I just don't feel the same speed I do as when I'm using my laptop keyboard, and that would delete things, but I don't obviously want that. And yeah, that's honestly pretty much it. Another thing I'd like to go over is uh, Vimium. So I love scrolling with Vimium and like going to the bottom and going up URL hierarchies, but honestly, like clicking on stuff with this is like, it's not even really faster than using your trackpad, to be honest. I, I kind of think there's like a point of diminishing returns with these ergonomics and it's easy to get obsessed with them and it really, it doesn't make you that much faster. I mean, it's, it's cool, but yeah, flying around to the keyboard is not all that necessary. I mean, like a, a good old a good old laptop keyboard, not even a mouse, a trackpad is really all you need. Maybe until I get crippling carpal tunnel, then I'll go back and I'll re-optimize all of this stuff. But Vera Sweep, not all that good anymore. Like just too many layers. Maybe I don't have my layers set up like as buttery as they could be, but. I also might consider something like a Kinesis in the future. The thing is like, my laptop is like my travel around computer. If I were to make like a desktop setup, I'm usually just plugging my laptop in, right? And using the keyboard on that with uh, another monitor. But like, I guess it would be nice to have a dedicated keyboard. I don't like mechanical keyboards that have really thick switches just because it feels like, it feels like there's more friction, more latency than when it's like the, the tactile laptop switches, but yeah, I it's it's been a weird journey. I've kind of I've gone through it all. I was obsessed with it for one point, and now I've like kind of gone back to normie keyboard territory. But that's just that's just my personal outlook on it. You shouldn't just trust someone randomly on the internet based on their experiences, because chances are their opinions will change all the time too. And maybe you have a crazy setup, don't abandon it just because I said to. Keep going on it if you like it. But if you're considering getting into this, it's expensive, it takes a lot of time. It won't get you a ton other than uh, just some fun, some good times. So for what it's worth, that's my Ferris Sweep setup, kind of uh, depreciated or deprecated now. And yeah, I'll catch you next time.